Hey there, this is Amy, and in this video I'm going to show you everything you need to know to take a great photo of the night sky with a DSLR camera. Now, you might think that you need a fancy telescope or expensive gear, expensive lenses, expensive cameras, but you really don't. You don't even need a star tracker to track the stars across the sky. All you need is a DSLR camera that allows you to put it into manual mode. Mine is just a Rebel T6, your basic entry-level camera. And you need a good tripod. You want a tripod that's going to withstand a breezy night and also heavy gear. So make sure you don't get one that's um, kind of flimsy. There's a variety of lenses you can use, but it's better to use one that has a fixed focal length or that at least lets quite a lot of light in. So the nifty 50 50 millimeter lens that came with the camera is a decent one to use. But I would recommend if you invest in anything to invest in a wide angle lens if you don't already have one. A wide angle lens with a low F number has a larger aperture and lets more light into your camera. And a prime or fixed length lens is best. You should not use a zoom lens, which is the default beginner lens that usually comes with your camera. What's great about a wide angle lens is that you can shoot all sorts of photos. It's great for Milky Way photography. It's great because it covers a wide uh, path in the sky, which is really the kind of photograph you want for night sky photography. It also is a little bit easier to um, get a decent photo because you don't have to worry so much about the depth of field and focusing is maybe a little bit easier with a wide angle lens. So that covers the camera, the lens, the tripod, and those are the main features that you need. In addition though, I wanted to mention that there are a few different gadgets that'll help you in your night sky photography. Um, even though you can use the self timer on your camera, it's not a great idea. It's better to use what they call a remote shutter release or an intervalometer. These allow you to take a photo without touching the camera, which is critical when you have the shutter open for several seconds. The difference is that the intervalometer will let you program a series of photographs. Just make sure you buy an intervalometer that fits your camera. The other thing you're going to want in cooler weather and through winter is a lens warmer. It just wraps around the lens and it warms it up and keeps it from doing up, which is something that happens in winter. I, I just hook mine up to a portable battery and uh, keep the battery in my pocket. And both of those, um, fairly lightweight, fairly simple. A cheaper alternative to a lens warmer and battery is just rubber banding hand warmers or toe warmers to your lens hood. And finally, you're gonna wanna take um, a headlamp along with you or a flashlight that uh, allows you to have a red light and the reason that you want red is because um, not only it will it allow you to see at night but it won't wreck your night vision which is something you definitely don't want to do at night. That's it pretty much for the gear so let's talk now a little bit about settings. Okay for your camera you want everything on manual. That's the biggest, the most important thing. You're gonna to wanna to switch your camera over to manual. You also wanna be sure to turn off your camera's image stabilization and any autofocus if your lens has that feature. Now, the aperture. What you need for the aperture is uh, typically you want it to be at the lowest number, the low f-stop, the lowest one that your lens will even allow because this brings in more light and allows you to get more stars and more deep sky objects in your photo. The next thing is the ISO. Typically for night photography, you want it pretty high. So um, 1600 or higher. And some of this depends a bit on your camera and experimenting at different settings to see what works best. Now with a high ISO, you can end up with a lot of graininess in your photo or what's known as noise. And there are ways of reducing noise and post-processing that are beyond the basics covered here. 
But the important thing is, by having a high ISO, you also let in more light. You let in more of the stars and the, and the objects that you want to have in your photo. So go as high as the noise allows. Just keep zooming into your shot to see if the level of noise is acceptable. So I would recommend high ISO and don't be afraid to go really high if you're in a dark sky area. The next thing is the shutter speed. So the question is how long do you want to keep your shutter open? Um, and typically you want to do that between 15 and 30 seconds, but it really depends on your camera. It depends on your lens. But the idea is that you want to leave it open long enough to get a lot of light coming in, but not so long that you start getting star trails in your photo. Any, if, if, it's, if it's even a little bit too long, you'll get streaky stars and you really want pinpoint stars. There are a couple of rules you can follow to get pinpoint stars or as close to pinpoint as possible. One is the NPF rule and another is the 500 rule, which is a bit outdated now. The 500 rule basically says you take 500, you divide it by the focal length of the lens that you're using, and that gives you how many seconds you should hold open your shutter to take your photo. The trouble is if you have a crop sensor like I do, you're going to want to divide, um, take 500, divide it by 1.6, and then divide it by the uh, focal length of the lens. But, but rather than try and figure all that out, I've come to rely on this pretty cool app called PhotoPills. It's only $10, and it has a variety of features that help you figure out where to photograph, how to photograph, what to set your camera at. And it's got a feature called the Spot Star Calculator that will give you both the NPF and the 500 rule. Remember that your camera is like a telescope. The longer you hold the shutter open, just those 10 or 15 or 20 seconds, it's like magic. You are going to see so much in your photograph that you can't see with the naked eye. And you're going to see a lot of things you didn't expect to see. You're going to see um, all of these stars. You might see clouds, wispy clouds that you didn't even know were still there. You might see the... Um, the light on the horizon, the glow of the horizon from the sunset that you thought was completely over, but there's still a glow there. And of course, you'll, you'll see any lights, the headlights or the, the glow of the city in the background. But sometimes though, especially with Milky Way photography or uh, panorama views with, that you can get with your wide angle lens, having some of that glow can really improve your photo because it can light up a bit of what's in the foreground or what's at the bottom of the photo to contrast with what's up in the top. The final thing you need to know is that you want to shoot your photos in RAW. You don't want JPEG, you want a RAW file and most uh, cameras will allow you to change the settings so that you can save it as a pretty big file. Now yes, it's a pretty big file, it's going to take up some space on your computer, but it's helpful because in most um, astrophotography, even just photographs, your basic photographs of the night sky, constellations, and Milky Way, you're going to want to have the option in post-processing to fix your image and make sure that it is, um, that you maybe change the white balance or just draw out some of the uh, the contrast in the photo between the dark and the light. It can really improve your photos quite a bit. So that covers the gear and the settings and now I just want to talk a little bit about when to shoot and where to shoot. So when to shoot, you want to make sure it's well past sunset, like maybe 90 minutes to two hours past sunset. Definitely after astronomical dusk and well into what is considered true night. You can easily find this information online and there's even a fun app called the Soul Sun Clock. As you can see, you just turn the wheel to find when astronomical dusk ends and true night begins. In addition to that, you need to know where the moon is. Ideally, you would shoot during a new moon, uh, in the, and you can obviously find that pretty easily online as well, uh, where the moon is, what phase it's in. You want to shoot either during a new moon or to make sure that the moon has either set already or it hasn't risen yet. Um, because the moon, unfortunately, is your enemy if you're trying to get stars. It really is too bright for you to pick up stars in your photograph, and so you want to make sure you know where that is. You also want to know where your target is, where it's rising in the sky, where it's setting, and when you're going to go out and see it, and that's very easy to find online. 
you can you can look at um, there's open source software called Stellarium. There are apps like Sky Safari or Night Sky. There's even a handy interactive chart online at skyandtelescope.org that lets you see what's on the horizon as you rotate the view by minutes or hours. And the other thing you want to make sure of is that you go to a dark location. You should get away from the city, if you can, away from city light or any light pollution. There are dark sky preserves in Michigan. The, there are national forests and the entire UP is basically a dark sky park. So any place like that, there's even one close to Ann Arbor. Basically, the darker, the better. Okay, so we've taken care of gear and settings and where and when to shoot your uh, night sky photograph. Now I wanna talk a little bit about focusing because as you can imagine, focusing can be a little tricky at night. First of all, focusing on infinity is not a good substitute for good focusing and it especially won't work for lenses that are 25 millimeters or higher. The key to manual focusing at night is to use the live view mode. Pick the brightest object you can see in the night sky, such as a planet or a bright star. Even a far off street light will do in a pinch. Zoom in 10 times, adjust the focus ring until you get the object in focus or the stars become pinpoints, and zoom back out. Then just reposition your camera to the part of the sky you want to shoot. In a pinch, you can also just focus during the day and tape your focus ring in place so it doesn't move. And that's it. That's all the gear and settings and basic information you need to take a photograph of the night sky. Next time, we're gonna take a look at how to catch a meteor in one of those photographs.